Good morning. I'm Christopher Letts and we are at Croton Point Park. In my estimation, one of the gems of the Hudson River. When I'm working with school groups and there's one due in about three minutes, I point to my little pickup truck and I say, that's my office, you're in it. And my office changes every day. I'm up and down the river and on both sides of it, from the Bear Mountain Bridge to the George Washington Bridge, in all seasons and in all weathers, doing different kinds of programs. I feel most at home right here at Croton Point. I just love this piece of real estate. It used to be 150 acres of, of marsh and about 300 acres of, of what they would call fast land down south. But um, now it's, it's almost all fast land. Uh, the marshes have been filled with, with garbage and that's changed things out here. But it's a storied place um, and I could point in almost any direction and spin you a yarn. Over there on that hillside, you can find the outcroppings of millions and millions of oyster shells with associated Indian artifacts, uh, Algonquian artifacts. Those were left there two and three and four thousand years ago by the first peoples who, who lived here. Down the way a little bit is a tiny crescent of a beach a hundred feet long called Mother's Lap. And I saw it on a map and I thought that's a, that's a nice name. And about three years later, in the middle of the night, with ice on the gunnels of a boat and a ton and a half of net and fish, we fouled our, our propeller, making a run north of her plank. And things did not look good. We didn't think we would drown, but we thought we would lose the boat and the motor and the net and the, and the catch of fish. We made it around that northwest point and we were instantly in a calm water. And in a second more, we were safe on mother's lap. And that name makes, means a lot more to me now. Down this way, a quarter of a mile past the park office, is a place called Money Hill. It's gone now. Um, the county, in all its wisdom, used it to cap the first of the Croton dump, the one they call Railroad One. And I asked Henry Gordine, the, the senior fisherman and the senior philosopher on the Hudson River, oh, maybe 20 years ago, I said, uh, where was Money Hill? Well, it's gone, he said. I said, why did they call it Money Hill? Well, there was supposed to be money buried under it. Well, did they find any money? No, and it serves him right, that was what Henry's take was. And that same day, he took me down to the south shore of the point, and he pointed to some broken cement abutments in the sand, and he said, this was the Macy's family seaplane dock. Back in the 20s, they were one of the first families in this country to have a private commuter plane to fly them back and forth to New York City. What we were really looking for was the remnants of the foundations of the building he was born in more than a hundred years ago, the old brick fish house. And we looked and we looked and he said, well, things have changed a lot. And they do change. They change here at Croton Point. They change slowly. A little bit later on, we were out on what people call Sarah's Point or, or Southwest Point. And we were looking out across the curve of the Croton Reef, the, the stony, uh, projection that lies underwater except at the very lowest of tides and curls out for an eighth of a mile. And he said, I remember my father bringing me here and, and talking about the schooner Bluebird and how she st struck fast in a February gale. And the water was so rough that for three days nobody could get out to her. She was only an eighth of a mile offshore, but no boat could live in that surf, he said. The crew climbed into the rigging and lashed themselves to the spars and perished, every single one of them. And when Henry told me the story, it was as if it were yesterday. And, I, and, and I, I, everywhere I go on Croton Point, <clears throat> I hear voices. There's something really mystical and magical. The worst that can happen to a piece of land and a piece of water has happened out here, and the best as well. It's, it's just a fantastic place to come. I would say avoid it between 10 o'clock and 4 o'clock on summer weekends, and come instead when there's a new moon, a full moon rising in the evening um, sometime in September or October. Go up on top of what I call the dump, but they insist as a landfill, and watch the new moon, the full moon, come up over Ossining and watch the, the sunset behind the Palisades, and you'll be a different person. I, I guarantee it'll last for at least 24 hours. Come here in the wintertime. Come here in January and take an early morning walk when the ground is crunching under your feet and watch the eagles wake up as they come down from their roosts on the Croton River and start searching for their breakfast out uh, on, on Croton Bay. Right now, I just pointed out to the kids the first batch of Orioles, the first flight of Orioles of the year, singing in the willow trees right over our heads. They weren't here yesterday, and they're here now. Down in the ball field parking lot, 
I went to the maintenance crew here three weeks ago and said, there's a mother killdeer down there and she's sitting in the middle of the parking lot on a clutch of four eggs. And those good guys went down and strung up a barricade around it. Two days ago, those eggs hatched and now there's four tiny killdeer looking exactly like their mother running all over that parking lot, paying us back by eating, eating bugs. Croton Point's a good place. 213 kinds of fish swim past this point. The best blue crabbing in the fall is right here. Migratory birds come in the spring and the fall, and Croton Point sticks out halfway across the river. If you're a bird and you're flying at a thousand feet and you look down, what you see is a safe gangway to the west bank of the river in the fall of the year. So it's like the wasp waste of an hourglass. And birds, in my imagination, from Maritime Canada and all of the Northeast funnel down to that wasp waste. Take a deep breath, fly a little harder, <sighs> safe on the rock one side, and on their way to their wintering grounds. And in the spring, the same thing happens in reverse. It's a great place.